Hello. In this episode, we are going to look at the conformations of simple alkanes and the symmetry implications thereof. One of the most common ways of showing to demonstrate the conformations of alkanes starting with ethane, ethane, C2H6, is the so-called Newman projection. And I know that most students, when they first encounter a Newman projection, say the following, Hello, Newman. But the Newman projection is much more useful than we often imagine. Let me show the simplest Newman projection here. Here we have a model of ethane, C2H6. And in the Newman projection, the substituents that are attached to the front carbon are shown in front, and then the substituents that are attached to the second carbon are shown behind. Now, for ethane, we can have several different conformations. One of the conformations we have where the substituents that are attached to the second carbon are directly behind, see they're directly behind, the substituents from the first carbon. This is the so-called eclipse formation because it reminds us of a solar or lunar eclipse. Another conformation we can have is when the substituents that are attached to the second carbon, the carbon that is behind, so the front substituents are here, here, and here. The substituents that are attached to the back or second carbon are here, here, and here. We notice that they are sort of peeking out. We call this the staggered conformation. Any other arrangement, for example, if we arrange them this way, where they're neither eclipsed nor staggered, we call a skew conformation. Now, one advantage to making a model of a Newman projection, as opposed to simply drawing it on a piece of paper, is the following. The first is we're free to move the substituents to make any of the conformations that we are interested in. There's actually a second advantage in that we can simply flip the model over and we can look at it from the back side. So in some cases, it, we may be more comfortable uh, viewing the substituents from one particular direction or the other, and we're free to simply turn the model over and look at it from the back side if we like. Now, for ethane itself, it turns out that the staggered conformation, this particular arrangement, is the low energy conformation. When we have the eclipse formation, we have the eclipse one like this, this is the high energy version. It turns out, though, that the difference in energy between the eclipsed conformation and the staggered conformation is relatively small. So small that at room temperature, we have very nearly free rotation around the carbon-carbon bond. There's a carbon-carbon single bond holding the front carbon to the back carbon. So much so that if we were to view this on a relatively slow time scale, uh, for example, the time scale of NMR spectroscopy, we would see a mixture of all the different conformations. Because the, uh, the energy or barrier between the conformations is so low, there is enough thermal energy at room temperature to easily um, surmount that. So we have very nearly free rotation around this particular bond. If, for example, we were to change the substitution pattern of our ethane so that we have a methyl group attached to the front carbon and another methyl group attached to the back carbon, now we have um, a butane. So now we have a greater number of named conformations. So for example, we still have the eclipse formation, eclipse conformation, 
so that the two methyl groups are essentially directly in front of each other. Because there is steric hindrance, this is the high energy conformation. As we turn and we reach the first or the nearest of the staggered conformations, here the two methyl groups are still relatively close to each other. This is known as the gauche conformation. So again, as we continue, this is a slightly high energy conformation because there is still some steric hindrance. As we rotate it around again, we reach another eclipsed conformation. If we continue a little further, now we have a staggered conformation, but now where the two methyl groups are completely different sides of the molecule, and this is known as the anti-conformation. So the anti-conformation for a sort of single substituent that's different um, on the front carbon and the back carbon will be the low energy conformation. Another advantage of making models of Newman uh, projections is that we can do the following. For example, if we take our ethane, we can disassemble the model temporarily, temp take away the second carbon conformations, and replace it with a single chlorine and two hydrogens, a chloromethyl substituent, and we can reassemble our Newman projection. And once we've reassembled it, now we have a model of chloroethane. And again, we can work through the different possible conformations, starting with the stagger at uh, the eclipse conformation, which will be the high energy conformation. And as we rotate around, first we have the various skew conformations, and then we have the staggered conformation. So the ability to disassemble and reassemble with different substituent patterns allows these models to be used to demonstrate uh, Newman projections, not only for the simplest case of ethane, but for even extremely complicated substituent patterns. Today's episode is going to concentrate on the conformations of ethane itself and uh, re related uh, compounds. If we have the eclipse conformation, we're going to see surely that this is an example of D3H symmetry. And even starting with the Newman projection, we recognize how similar this looks to the models that we had used before to show for uh, the trigonal case of D3H all the way back in episode two. And we will show even more complicated models to demonstrate the symmetry properties of D3H in the eclipsed conformation of ethane. If we take the staggered case, take the staggered case, this is an entirely new point group that we had not previously mentioned uh, in the program called D3D. And we have several models which we will use to demonstrate the unique symmetry operations of that particular point group. If we have a skew conformation somewhere in between, this is another unique point group that we had not mentioned previously called D3. So it has no mirror. So it doesn't have a horizontal mirror. It doesn't have dihedral mirrors. In fact, it has no mirrors at all, but it still, does still have a C3 um, high order rotation axis. And it will also have three C2s that are perpendicular to it. We do not have a model uh, for this particular point group in this episode, but a model will be appearing in a future episode. But until then, let's start to look at models of the eclipsed form of ethane.